Hello and welcome to another episode of Holding It Down with Three Plates Tommy. Today's a special episode. You only have me today. We had a couple guests that we had like two guests that were gonna show up. Motherfuckers didn't show up. But we're good. What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in and having the patience for me. And I'm saying to come back for some episodes. We're gonna have a whole bunch of episodes lined up with cool guests, music, everything, you know, show wise. And we're gonna be coming up with a little live soon. I don't know uh, when, but we're gonna have a live with music. You guys can fucking come and get tickets. We're gonna be at the brewery. It's gonna be cool. Another thing I wanna let you guys know. Uh, We've been away for a little while. We've been, life has been happening, work, uh, you know, getting everything together. Stuff's going down, but we're here back with you guys. Thank you guys. Um, I got a whole bunch of cool shows coming up. I've been doing a bunch of comedy. Um, and the comedy w- thing wise is, uh, it, it's, you know, just kind of, kind of just, took over everything uh the uh, bigger the main focus was just doing shows and doing open mics i even had an open mic for a little bit in uh downey uh, i linked up with one of the guys from uh from the bellflower stand-up a guy that my homie rudy that before i was homies with them since back in the day when i first moved to la he was our neighbor in the apartments where we lived at and uh i just like randomness uh when we did a show me george and xavier had a show in the bellflower stand-up that was the time that we met uh with popeye popeye was there that was the first time i met popeye but um i ended up meeting rudy at that show and he i was like hey you're my fucking old neighbor what's up he was running the shows and the talent at the bellflower stand-up scheduling and all that we linked up with him and, uh, you know, me and him been trying to work stuff out, making some stuff. And he came across this room that we had. And uh, we had the room for a couple of days. We did one show with uh, Ethan was there. Ethan, the background producer right here, him and Mo. And uh, but Ethan pulled up and uh, we had a good fucking show. We had a whole bunch of com- comedians and most of the uh, the first fucking uh show that we did have it was mostly my family and homies that showed up which was cool we had a good time everyone was partying we had a whole bunch of comics show up and and do their thing and uh it just um got me in in uh just opened up like what turned on a light to just say you know what we can we can make something happen with this comedy thing the more you can do like me i did that open mic show Kind of because I didn't have somewhere to go to do open mics because of my schedule with work. Uh, with work, it's like uh, the stuff, the, the work that I do or whatever is kind of, you don't really have a set schedule. It ain't Monday through Friday. It's kind of this date to this date. So I have to work around to do my stand up or to do open mics and all that. So I just said, you know what, fuck, I'm not able to do that because on the days that I do have off, I don't, I won't know that I'm going to have them off until the day before, maybe sometimes. So I don't have time to to do open mic. So I said, hey, let me just set a schedule. And on Thursday nights, we're going to have this open mic. And we had it for a couple nights. And that's how we were able to do that one. It was cool. Showing me a lot of, uh, I don't know, like... Uh, how hard it is to get people to go to your events or to uh to get comics to come out to your show when you're not i guess like a a known comic you know uh not known not like that but i'm saying like your your fools go because they've seen you at these open mics to see you all the way around and they're like oh come to my show come to my show me it was kind of we were just given the opportunity to do this open mic and i was like i need to practice my stuff i want to have a place where i can go and uh, the the idea was to do it long term, to have it be like a long term show, and do it every, like a weekly basis. But sometimes it doesn't work out like that. But in the midst of that, I was able to meet up with other comedians that gave me other opportunities to do open mics at their spots or the spots that they did open mics at, which is cool. 
and I thanked them, and I was able to do a couple open mics here and there. One of them also was with Ethan. Uh, Ethan has a spot. It's called the Wasted Talent Collective. They have it every last Friday of the month here at 4th Street Market in Santana. If anybody out there does comedy or whatever, or you're trying to start up, or you want to just go and check out some comedy, you don't have nothing to do on the last Friday of the month, come check it out. I'll be there probably every last Friday of the month with Ethan and a whole bunch of other comedians. It's tight. Go check it out. It's just a good time. Go have a beer, and they have a whole bunch of food and all this stuff. It's just cool. But, I don't know, doing all the... Just trying to squeeze in and do as much as comedy as possible right now. Just because, like, I just I've been able to get I like get a lot of opportunities. Cool, which uh, a lot of people that have been doing comedy for a long time sometimes they're like, "Hey, this fool's already doing those things." So I try to just focus on doing comedy, doing my set as as best as possible, working on my set. Uh, writing different things, getting everything just because uh, a lot of fools, they don't think, they're, they're like, oh, you don't deserve to be where you're at. Not by, they never, nobody ever said that, but it's like a lot of fools in this industry, like in comedy, like they've been doing that shit for a long time. And sometimes they've been trying to to do it or get to places where I've been able to get to places because of not actually the people I know, I wouldn't say that because these fools know a grip of comedians the people that I work with and that I'm around that gave me the opportunity, like George Perez, Edwin San Juan. These guys are beasts that can be uh, comedy, you know, like, and they are also know just cause you're my homie or you're cool with me. doesn't mean that I'm going to throw you up on the shows and sometimes, like, I'm not going to tell fools, like, hey, dog, uh, like, you know, I know that fools have been, like, doing this shit 10, 12, 15 years. And they're like, hey, you, we're doing comedy together. Like, how the fuck does this happen? It's like, I don't know. I just try to do my best out there when I do it. And these guys see it, that I work on my comedy, that I try to do it as much as possible, that I work at it, and that... Like, I don't know, my whole life I've been trying to entertain people. Like, if you know the podcast, if you know me or what I've been doing, my whole, uh, I'm always about just trying to pump, get the fucking party going. Uh, have people have fun, have a good time. And I've been able to do it with this comedy stuff. So I take it serious and try to, like, write as much as possible. Try And I don't ever get to try out new stuff. So I, I try to stay in my safe zone and do the stuff that I've been doing that I know works. But it's just because this is new to me, you know? And that's why I did that open mic uh, thing and been doing other open mics to work on my other comedy that, on my other stuff that I write, on my other jokes, on my other material. And um, doing all this shit just, just uh, opened up a big ass window of, of what I could do and what I want to do and it's it's i don't know it's it's uh it's a trip sometimes i never imagined myself doing comedy i never imagined myself doing the you know the stuff next to these guys that i've watched since back in the day like um i knew of george perez and of edwin san juan before because my sister used to watch comedy all the time and back in the day they used to go to comedy shows all the time and george perez was there felipe esparza Joe Coy, Edwin San Juan, all these people, uh, they would go and watch. And back in the day, that shit, it, comedy always interests me, but I was never like a fucking, like, all super into comedy. There's guys that are, that's like comedy is their life, dog. And I, I wish I would have gotten that back in the day, um, like into comedy, being into comedy and all that, um, since before because it's I don't know it just took over so much of my life now where I'm like fuck I wish I would have done this shit fucking 15 years ago I would have been it's something that I like doing it's telling stories it's entertainment I can tell people you know different shit funny shit and uh get a response these people like it or not and 
now I'm like, man, I wish I would have done it back then. But hey, everything happens for a reason or at the right time. Maybe back then I shouldn't have, have uh, you know, I wouldn't have gotten it down right. But I'm always thankful for the opportunities that, that I do get to do comedy, like being up there with George and Edwin. And I did the comedy store for April Fool's which is like huge the comedy stores like if you guys don't know comedy stores like one of the biggest comedy fucking clubs known all over the world a lot you know people love it some people hate it but it's where all the big giant fools that you see now fucking love and respect and came out of you know it maybe not came out of but they're there and they respect the comedy club it's a huge like, I don't know, it's a big-ass movement, dog. The the comedy store, is, is that's where you want to be. The, and given the opportunity to be there and fucking actually doing comedy there, it's huge. That's, like, the biggest fucking thing to me. Like, I would have never, never thought that I would... I would have never thought that I would be at the comedy store doing comedy, not, you know, next to the guys that I've watched since back in the day that I was interested in and knowing who has came out of there, it's like, that shit's crazy. But I did the April Fool show with George, uh, Craig Conant, um, Edwin San Juan. Fucking, there's a grip of uh, really good comedians there that have been doing it forever and just being there and able to do that was fucking dope. But if the, it was April Fool's, it was for George's, George Perez's birthday bash. April Fool's at the comedy store. And that was one of the big things when I went up. It was uh it was like, oh shit. Like, all right, motherfucker. Um this ain't just some fucking around shit. You're you're with the big dogs. And it's just just being there on that stage with those guys and being able to do comedy and actually holding up, you know, making people laugh. That's that's huge. That's like one of the biggest accomplishments right now that that uh I can say that they're just like, you know what, I'm I'm on the right path. This is what I want to do. Um, I, I want to work on doing more stuff. Like I've been trying to do, incorporate a lot of like music into my comedy. Just because I got, I, I, I seen, um, I don't know, I just, the shit that inspires me is it's always been music and making people laugh. And if there's a way that I can incorporate me singing and making people laugh into one thing and make it entertaining for people that's that's another goal and accomplishment for me something that i set out like something that i want to do i want to incorporate doing my music being able to where people when they go to the fucking show and they're like dog it was a good time you were, we fucking heard some cool songs you fucking sang you did your fucking comedy you had us going and laughing if i'm able to do that and then I'm happy, you know, and I'm right now I'm doing all the open mics that I can and any set that I'm able to do, like anybody that lets me open for them or or go go and do a spot at their club, like I try to do it. And uh I'm working on, on how to make that shit work where it's music and comedy. So we have a lot of I have a lot of stuff planned for everybody, you know. Shows. I hopefully the um, the li we're gonna have a live podcast, and I want to do a little bit of comedy in the, in the podcast, also doing music because that's what people like, and that's what people know me for, and that's what you guys like, and and I love. That's the shit that I love. Like you know, whenever I whenever I'm feeling sad, whenever I'm feeling fucking, whenever I'm happy, whenever I'm having a good day, or whenever I'm having a bad day. Music is always a part of it. Um, ever since I was little, I've always sang. Like if I was having a bad day or whatever, I always, I'd always just sing or do some shit, act like I was singing in front of the mirror when I was a little kid. And now shit would make, you know, whatever I was going through or whatever at the moment go away. If fools were having a bad day, I would sing. I would be like, fucking, I'll, I'll fucking bust a corrido or I'll sing fucking tres animales and being a little kid and shit. Um, that was like one of the the things that always made me be cool and i've always said like music could make you happy or make you sad you can listen to a song and it'll take you to a fucking exact place and you'll be like damn 
you know, it'll take you to a place. And so I just want to do something that makes people be happy and remember when they hear a fucking song and be like, oh, I remember I went to a fucking three place show and that fool sang that song, that shit was tight. I want people to just leave our shows having a good time and be entertained. And we're going to try to make that shit happen. We got some plans for a live show and I have some my, some of my musician homies that are going to pull up and uh, make some fucking, make some magic have you guys come out we'll be partying it's always gonna be a good time we always you know let you guys do your thing last live that we had was so wild we couldn't even post it i don't know whatever happened to that video of our last live we have to fucking bring it out huh one of the fucking ones episode fucking the last the last episode i know huh you want people to show up you want that live you got to show up to the motherfucking show but yeah, our last live was wild. We had a DJ there. We had fucking music, but this time we're going to have DJ music, fools coming out, singing, and just a, a good time. So you guys are going to want to come back to, to you know, and tell your friends and all that shit. Tell the motherfuckers, like, hey, we went to this food show and it was wild. Make some sh motherfucking shit happen. Another thing that I want to tell you guys is we don't really talk about, we don't have a commercial for it, but... Cervezacito Brewery, 4th Street Broadway, for always taking care of us. They got the Chacalosa. That's Mikey's mom, Jenny Rivera. Mikey was one of our guests on our shows. And, uh, you know, the the, the we, we did a fucking karaoke. Well, they did a karaoke with his mom, but we the ideas came right here on our show. But the Chacalosa, they have the Chacalosa now. Make sure you guys go to 4th Street Broadway in Santa Ana to get some brews and have a good time. They have everything. And they have Loteria. They have fucking trivia night. If there's, it's a basketball games, baseball, whatever, you could go right there. It's just a good time. Go right there and it's all, everyone's chill. Nobody's tripping. It's a bomb, you know, bomb place. And believe me, every time we go to uh, Cerveza Cito Brewery, it's going to be a story. Like every time that I chill with homies or something or anybody that's told me that they went to the, hey, we went to the brewery, fool, that you talk about the cervezacito that's on your show, that shit was tight. Or, or dog, you don't even want to know, fool, check this video out. Fools are going crazy after the videos. I'm one of them. Huh? The, the, the gay guy fucking got in front of him that night. Do you remember that? Uh, what to, oh, when we had the, the, they had the karaoke. That was at the, the Chacalosa karaoke. <laughs> <coughs> One of my homies got all crazy and left on us. Didn't he? He left on. I had to get an Uber. Dog, my homie got all mad at one of the fools that was dancing on it. Just fucking around, fool. But some fools can't take the heat. And he got all mad. He's like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm leaving. And we had to leave early. Eh, we had a good time anyways, dog. It's always. Hey, the, it's what you make it, homie. Let me take a little drink for Cervezacito Brewery. No, but yeah, and uh, another thing on a we fucking very not for another comedy. I was telling Ethan like I've always loved comedy. I've always loved fucking cantin flies. My parents used to bump Polo Polo when I was little. Polo Polo was like OG old ass Mexican fucking comedy, and before anybody else that I've ever heard of any comics or comedy, I knew Polo Polo because he would actually have tapes made. Like, this would have cassettes, and I guess they were all his specials. I didn't know that until now. Like, recently, like, hey, they, those were all his specials that he would have. And he would, uh, that's where I learned um, about, like, telling funny stories and how you can, you can make anything funny. It just depends. Like, fool, you could get a flat tire. And you could tell fucking a story about getting a flat tire and it'll be funny. Like there's some people that just have the gift of storytelling and to make that shit where you laugh and you're like, dig, my bad fool. I know it's fucked up. You got a flat, but that shit was hilarious when you were just telling me. And that's what it is, dog. It's just being able to tell a story. And I got from Polo Polo, that fool would make up stories and they wouldn't even make sense. And you'd be like, why the fuck are we laughing at this shit? This fool would be talking about a penguin they fucking would go to the store and ask for the same thing over and over. 
Then he came back like the sixth time after this. We did all the fucking mannerisms and everything that the fucking uh, the penguin would do. He came back the sixth time, asked him for something else, and then boom, slips him with the fucking the same question again. And people would die, and I'll be like, damn, that shit low key wasn't even that fucking funny. Well, fools are dying at this shit. So. I I don't know. I just try to uh, whenever I do shit, I just try to tell a story that's real. Like was a lot of the, the of my material, when you listen to it, and then you're like, you fucking probably heard that story before because it's some fucking real shit that went down. And I, that's where um, I don't know. I guess my style of comedy that I'm trying to fucking uh, what is it? Uh, grasp or whatever or 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 um develop is just storytelling um i just tell a fucking story about real shit and i'll add a little fucking salsa here and there but it's always real and they'll be like oh shit your mom does like I, shit where i talk about my fucking i'm fucking 39 and every time i get sick my mom thinks it's fucking awful and every time she be busting out the fucking huevo the egg and shit that's real shit I was sick last week. My mom came and she's like, I mean, it fucking busted out the egg. I was like, nah, it ain't that. I need fucking, I need some fucking NyQuil up in this motherfucker. Some, it ain't fucking on home. But yeah, just random shit. Like uh, being able to tell stories back in the day. But Polo Polo was one of the dudes that I looked back in the day uh, that I would listen to. Polo Polo. Um, fuck George Lopez. That fool was one of the same fools that I was like, this fool's fucking hilarious. He's relatable. And this is real shit that he's spitting. Other comedy, like you would see comedian fucking everything on BT. Like growing up in Ridgecrest, I grew up in a little town. So it was, uh, there was nothing, not too much to do. So we would watch a lot of fucking TV, BT, uh, Def Comedy Jam. That shit was all our shit. We would watch Earthquake, Bruce Bruce, Dio Hughley, uh, Tommy Davidson. All these people would be on there. And I was like, I remember those comics, you know, and, and I never followed comedy. I never kept, you know, kept it up. But, you know, the, the, the comedy that I would watch would be the main shit. Cat Williams, uh, the Kings of Comedy, um, George Lopez, Polo Polo different cantinflas movies shit like that that's what kind of got me to know what comedy is what stand-up is but i never really went deep in and dove into what who's comedy who does this type of comedy what type of comedy do the you know the shit that they talk about and sometimes i, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse Cause sometimes I don't know, like you couldn't tell me like, Hey dog, you're, you're, you, you, that's, you stole that joke or something. It's like, dog, I never fucking, any of the stories I never heard them or tell them because I heard them somewhere else. It's all real shit that happened or I just switch it up and do it myself. So sometimes it's, uh, I don't know with, with like comedy, it's like not knowing so much about it maybe is better in the long run. Cause you can't say, oh, I took that from there or I got my ideas from here or whatever. And sometimes it's bad because it's like, damn, you should have kind of done more research or known that you can't. I don't fucking know. And that's why I'm just doing it now. I'm working my shit out now, doing as much as open mics as I can, doing shows. You know, Edwin San Juan gave me some chances to open up for him. I'm going on the road with with George Perez and opening up for him i was able to go to bakersfield with him we went to bakersfield shit was a wild cool just being the whole thing going on the road and and the stories that you listen to on the way there about you know comedy and these comics and how it was back in the day and how you know how it is now and how i noticed that back in the day everyone used to have rooms and fools would be like, oh, fucking Felipe has a room in fucking Downey. You could go right there and they have this and this guy has one in Hollywood. And I kind of got that idea. And that's what, where I was like, oh, I'm going to have my fucking open mic room on Thursdays at this fucking place. And it didn't work out. 
but I think what they like n- trial and error knowing now is like uh, what they had is like they were already established as comics. Like I did that spot just because I want to practice my stuff and bring the comics that I know around to work on their stuff. But I didn't real I didn't focus on too much of the um, t- getting people in there. Like a lot of what uh, what I also noticed about comedy now, and the little bit that I fucking did, uh, uh, did I do or whatever, um, it's all about getting uh, people in the seats. Like it doesn't matter if you fucking done comedy for fucking twenty years, ten years, two months, two years. It's if you can get people to come and watch you and sit, get and buy tickets, you're good. Like, it don't fucking matter. Like, I've seen fools that are, s- s- like, selling out spots, are sold out everywhere that they go. And I've seen them fucking struggle at a 10-minute open mic. Like, what the fuck? This fool's a fucking open... Like, your headline, dog? You have all these fucking big-ass shows, and you're struggling for the fucking little 10-minute spot right here? And it, it it's like, all it is is this fool or this person can get people to come and watch him and what he, how he fills up his, his fucking spot is by, he has a whole bunch of dope comics go up before him, but that was a fucking headliner, you know? So all it is, is uh, what I've noticed is you just got to be entertaining. Not, I'm saying all it is. I'm saying to me what I've seen, and I just noticed that you just got to be fucking entertaining, entertaining, have a following and have people to uh, be there that other people want to go see to fill up your your seat until they go and they see that you're actually good. Where they're like, hey, we want to keep going and we tell other people about it. So it's like I noticed that shit. I don't know. I always fucking look at uh, background shit and. I like uh, everything. When I remember, like, I, I always see, like, the the background. Like, how the fuck can I make this shit work more for me from, you know, from, from what I'm doing? I'm doing comedy. I'm trying to start comedy. I have a fucking podcast. I always try to figure out, like, what the fuck? How can I make more people uh, come out to the shows, more people engaged with the the what we're bringing out and everything? So... I always trip out, and I've what one thing I've noticed is, hey, if you can get fucking people to come to your shows, buy tickets to your shows, and go and want to see the people that you're there with, you have a little bit of fucking momentum going. So I just got to figure that shit out, uh, you know, um, what I'm trying to do and what what the way that I'm trying to make uh, to be in comedy. I just want to fucking do as much as comedy as possible. Go as much as places to have different people see my comedy until where it's uh it's just a way of life the the no you know where I don't uh where I can just do comedy I can just entertain people I can make people laugh can make people have a good time and want to go and see me that's what the fuck I'm working on right now but thank you guys for tuning in we're about to go into commercial break real quick we'll be right back. Suavecito's here to rescue your hair. Stop using Gorilla Snap. <laughs> that either leaves your hair rock hard or limper than my Uncle Rico. Meet Suavecito, the world's finest pomade with an unrivaled all day hold. No matter what your look is, we got you covered. Suavecito's water based, so it washes out easy and it won't pull your hair out. I went with the other guys. Once we got you looking fresh up top, we got beard oil, soaps, combs, t-shirts, skateboards, beer mugs, coffee mugs, bobbleheads. Just click the link and check out our full lineup. Or better yet, roll through. We're right here in Santa Ana. It's where we're from, where we live, and where we still make Suavecito to this day. We got thousands of reviews from guys who have thanked Suavecito for helping them land their dream job and their dream date with their dream do. Because when you feel good about yourself, people notice. Ready to transform your hair game for good? Click the link and pick up some of our award-winning superior pomade. Suavecito. Get it, hombre. 
And we're back. What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Holding It Down. But we're right here. Uh, we covered up a, a lot of the dates that are coming up. Remember, October 18th and 19th, we're going to be in San Diego at the American Comedy Club with George Perez and Xavier. Um, the May 31st, Friday, next Friday, we're going to be at the 4th Street Market at the Wasted Talent Collective Comedy Show. Me and a whole bunch of other guys. Um, I'm going to be one of the comedians And I'll be updating on all the shows That I'll be having on my Instagram Make sure you guys check it out And then also June 8th Here at Suavecito Headquarters Gunther's Right here in the parking lot We're going to have Victor Rivas Magic from Blood In Blood Out He's going to come through Have a signing, meet and greet uh, They're going to have the new Suavecito That's coming out The new uh what is it? The uh, the new pomade for for the for the season, seasonal pomade. Make sure you guys come check it out. Come here. There's gonna be some drink. You know we're gonna have salsito in the parking lot. But yeah, make sure you guys come check us out. Check out the shows. The link for the shows at the American Comedy Club in San Diego are at George Perez's uh, George Perez Comedy on Instagram's link. Um, and you know. Make sure you guys go check it, those shows out. Thank you guys for being here and tuning in. We have more episodes, more guests, cool guests. Not just me on here fucking rambling and talking. But thank you guys for another day. Let's go. Let's go.